Okay, so the plastic piece that I cut out last night for trying to make this uh, tripod adapter didn't work out at all. Uh, actually, less than worked out. It, having to kind of change my plan here, I'm going to be cutting out a, a piece of metal so I can uh, form it out of that. So, we'll see. Just going to be cutting out with a little three and a half inch grinder because I don't have any gas right now as we're kind of in the middle, in between shipments. So. Well, pretty much anyone who's a veteran or a current service member will know what this is. These SHA's heaters. You know, pretty compact little pieces of uh, ingenuity there. And they'll definitely keep your uh, tent warm, that's for damn sure. Uh, it burns wood, diesel, just about anything that you can uh, put in here with the right amount it'll burn. So, but what I've got to do today is not actually anything relating to the heaters per se is that these smokestacks are for some tents too small and when the wind will oscillate the tent the smokestack that is sticking out of the tent will get swallowed up by it or flap and rub around and burn its plastic on the edges and of the smokestack and really just makes it a, a bad for a seal so we have to come up with some stands. Probably going to make them out of uh, two inch angle, one eighth sidewall. So we'll get we'll get drawn here in a minute. This, they're not especially heavy. It's only about maybe 10, 15 pounds. But the center of gravity is, is pretty uh, pretty high already, so that's something that we're gonna have to take into uh, take into account. So the box for this the stand, simple like anything else, could just be two boxes of angle iron. Up on top, like so, supported by four legs. It's really not that simple. These things aren't that heavy. So there isn't any requirement to put in any sort of like extra weight bearing or, or trusses or gussets or anything like that. However, my main issue is with like this anytime I have a, a top heavy build is that there really isn't enough room. I have to suspend these things eight up off the ground, eight inches at, at a minimum. So that means that the entire weight is going to be up here. All it's going to take for, is someone knocking into this and it's going to go over because there's going to be very little support other than the smokestack itself. And the smokestack is just interlocking sleeves and it's not going to really support it. And the last thing that you want to do is dump uh, a whole heater, you know, one of these um, space heater arctic into, you know, a tent full of burning diesel or, you know, vice versa. So the best thing would be to do one upper box. Let me see if that's on the camera. Yeah. One upper box then a lower box that is a little bit wider. Then supported by four legs. Well, it's gonna look like this inside. So let's change this top heavy part is gonna fall over. You know, proper process planning and 
and setting things up is why I, I draw out pretty much every single project that I have. Proper step planning, proper process planning, and then especially if I have a lot of these to do, which I've got eight to do, I've got to figure out the best way to mechanically and industrially get these things done. Which doesn't mean cut all the pieces for one, then assemble it, then weld it. Usually, my process, if I've got eight of these things to do, I will cut out eight times all of the pieces that I need and then put them all together, you know, and label them and put them in, in their proper stacks of piles. But you don't want to be stopping and starting going over one process and then go over this process and then go over this process if you can help it when you're going to have to go all the way around again. You want to be able to go here, do all the things that you need to do here, go here, do all the things that you need to do here, go here, do all the things that you need to do here. That being said, a lot of times I will put in a scout project, as in like do the whole thing once first. If I have eight to do, I'll take seven, put those seven aside, do the one first, make sure everything's correct, make sure it's all within the tolerances that I need, and then go back through and then finish process all of the rest all at once. Yay! But got my diagram, just a rough outline, already pulled out. Measured out 70 degrees on the corners, then pulled out and further measurement to get what my base would gonna be like. Um, there's my little, I guess, kind of steampunk welding shield for my, uh, <laughs> that's more like Road Warrior at this point, um, for my uh, camera phone. I'm gonna have to figure out something I can do to stick on the front to put a auto darkener on it. I've got one right here but I don't know if this one is working all that well. I think there's a reason I pulled this out of the freaking, yeah. Yeah, this thing's shot. Uh, I left it out in the sun for a little while, hoping it would recharge its little batteries, but oh well. So I'm gonna have to start using hard lenses to protect the camera. We'll see. Um, here's my poor, Lincoln Electric welding gloves. Got these when I went up to uh, school with them. Spent um, spent a month with Lincoln Electric a couple years back. Uh, the Army paid for, and because uh, they did some uh, uh, did some big projects for them, and they uh, rewarded me with uh, some schooling, which was nice. And when those are too uh, too thin, honestly, they haven't ever really been too thin, except when I've been doing something really nasty. Um, but you can see they've lived uh, a pretty hard life. They're, they're just a few rough grabs away from being needed to be replaced anyways. But these, these Chronotrons, they're, they're really nice. They're, man, they will make you sweat, but they're, they're pretty good. Between those two, and I had a pair of foils out here, but I'm not sure where they went. I think they're in, still in a box somewhere. Hmm. Yeah, got my Viking helmet 2450. Also got that at Lincoln. Been having some problems with its electronics though recently, ever since it uh, came across the ocean there. But uh, when in doubt, hmm, no name Jackson helmet. Got it. When in doubt, use what the Army gives you, right? Hmm, joy. Okay, we're going to use some. Uh, parting rods, some of these cutting rods right here, and uh, because we have no gas and I have no saw, so yeah, I know, this is kind of ridiculous, but nothing you can really do about it, field expediency, yay, alright, well, let's, let's get cutting.
right, let's see what sort of line we're going to be able to get with this uh, these cutting rods. We're really using that up. So, let's see. Probably not all that good. Really not all that good. I mean, it's no, no plasma cutter. <laughs> all right. Well, I just finished cutting up all these pieces, and uh, the the fit up isn't all that great. I just went and checked it against the size of the box, and uh, yeah, there's going to be about an eighth inch of a gap that's going to have to go on each one of these. Uh, somewhere along the line, I think one of my one or two of my marks got smudged, or it's also the downside of using chalk. Sometimes it gets a little smudged, and it's not as precise. Um, but it's not like this is a heavy, heavy support issue, so it's not something I feel too bad about having a little eighth inch divide in there um, so I'll get these all uh, ground down to looking nice they're uh, at 45 degree angles so it'll it comes out with a nice square box I can't I can't abide squares and corners that aren't beveled doesn't make sense of course I'm coming from a background of carpentry so it just makes sense to me so yeah, I'll be putting it together probably 60, 13, 60, 11, just depending on what I've got in my trailer. I'd use 70, 18, but I want something I can easily whip into this gap. So, should be good. It's good enough for open route passes, it's good enough for this, huh? Well, now that we've got it all squared up, and tacked to approximately where it needs to go. I'll go ahead and do a full run on this bottom side and then see what we got. Just going to be using some 6010 here and pretty, pretty thick rods for this application, but I mean, it'll work. Oh, miss having a ch chop saw though. makes cutting 45s so much easier than doing it by hand. Let's see how my little camera holds up with this.
Well, these these 6010 rods didn't really like it very much. Uh, I'm not really sure why. I'm gonna have to grind and scrape a whole bunch of this and see what it looks like underneath. These rods might be too old. God only knows. They could be from the freaking 70s. Hmm.